a lot of my boots are coming up to about a year's worth of wear. This week, it's the turn of this pair of Grantstone field boots. How are you going? Welcome back to Bootlosophy, and my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I'm recording on, the Wajik people. I'm assessing uh, what's happened to this pair of boots today, the Grantstone field boot in Badalassi Carlo's saddle tan. I bought these in May of 2023 uh, from Grantstone's seconds page. You can watch my unboxing uh, up here. As always, when I unbox Grantstone seconds, I play a little game of spot the defect, and I could not. But now a year later, I, I think it is possible that the batch of Badalasi saddle tan uh, that made this boot was just a little bit darker than normal. People who have seen these in my other videos comment on how dark they are and ask me whether I've conditioned them. I'll tell you the answer to that in, in a minute, but my memory is that they did not come out of the box in as vibrant an orange as the same leather in my saddle tan diesel uh, first boots. Uh, at any rate, rather than go through uh, the whole content about brand and construction, you can watch the review I did when these were three months old up here. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to focus on how they have worn. Let's start with what they are. People familiar with American heritage boots will recognize these as being modeled after New England hunting boots with the mock toe, uh, the slightly taller shaft at six and a half inches from the top of the heel, nearly eight inches from the bottom of the heel. Stylistically, it follows those New England uh, moccasin construction boots with the mock toe vamp. Two pieces of leather there, I understand, uh, and this toe bumper piece, uh, which I understand is only one piece of leather. Um, the extra stitching along the quarters and the pocket stitch at the back stay, it's all in keeping with that particular design. The taller shaft has this suede padded collar, which I think helps with the comfort of a taller boot on, on the back of your calf. Everyone knows Grant Stone by now, surely. Uh, based in Michigan, USA, but producing out of a contract factory in Xiamen, China. Producing really high quality shoes at good prices for what comes out. Uh, really good prices, even though the prices on all their boots took a hike up this year. Now this is built on their Floyd last, a mock toe last that they also use for their brass boots. I have a review of, uh, of one up here that provides some height and therefore volume in the toe box. I'll tell you about the fit of these two in a minute. Now my understanding of most of those New England hunting boots is that they are true moccasin construction, uh, like the shoes worn by American First Nations people. A piece of leather is lasted from underneath to wrap up the sides and then the uh, vamp piece and the quarter pieces are sewn on to that leather coming up from underneath. So in true moccasin construction, this whole bottom uh, side piece would wrap up from underneath. This top of the vamp piece would then be sewn onto the apron with the mock toe stitch. These quarter pieces would be sewn to the top edge of the underneath piece. This would actually be uh, 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 stitching them together. And then the bumper is sewn on and the midsole is basically then blake stitched to the underneath piece of leather and the outsole is then stitched onto the midsole. In this case, it's 360 degree Goodyear welted, like all of Grant Stone's boots. Solid veg tanned welt, solid veg tanned midsole. And here's something very interesting. In almost all wedge sole boots, they use a rubber midsole because it's, it's just um, physically better to glue the rubber outsole onto rubber, it sticks better. Uh, especially if you don't stitch through to the uh, wedge outsole. In this case, I can't see that usual thin rubber midsole, so it looks like they are confident enough in the security of their glues, which takes me to how they have worn in the last year. So, it's always hard to take a guess at how much I've worn a pair of boots, uh, especially I have, I have so many. <laughs> um, in estimating how often I've worn these, I know I took them on two walking vacations that were about nine or 10 days each and which I wore them a lot, if not practically every day. I have also worn them on some weekend 10 mile hikes, uh, sometimes on easy ground, but uh, also sometimes on pretty rugged, rocky uh, trails. 
I have also worn them a lot casually, not for a whole day, more like a, a weekend day trip somewhere or uh, going to a lunch or a barbecue, that sort of thing. My fair estimate is that I've worn them, not regularly, but in longish installments, uh, over about 450, 475 kilometers, which is about 280, 290 miles. Uh, not a lot, but good enough mileage, I think, to take stock. So what do I think? In terms of comfort, I call these eventually comfortable. <laughs> in boots, when you put your feet in cold, there's a feeling of stiffness and snugness, and you have to wait maybe 10 minutes as they and your feet warm up to each other before they feel like what they're going to feel like for the rest of the day. In these, I find they take a bit longer. Uh, uh, when you first put these on, you feel that they are stiff. Uh, you feel that maybe the wedge sole and certainly the leather insole are pretty hard to stand on. As you start walking, there is still a little heel slip and you maybe try to tighten up the lacing a bit to fix that. The sides of your feet, they're not snug exactly because uh, even in the right uh, size, there's a bit of volume in this last. But wait half an hour and the warming up is over and it then feels comfortable, but still supportive. It really does warm up to your feet after that. And in fact, I think the bones in your feet kind of relax a bit into them and the stiff wedge sole just doesn't feel hard underneath anymore. I, I can't explain it. The heel slip remains, by the way, I think because of that thick wedge sole and the veg tan midsole, it, it's just too difficult to flex uh, even now. In fact, so much so that I feel they might actually flex a little bit beyond the ball of my feet. These are supposed to be the right size, you know, Grant Stone, half a, half a size down. But it does feel like the, the heel to ball measurement might be a little long. That being said, I've come out the other end of a four hour, 10 mile hike without any pain, discomfort or blisters, wearing thick socks, I grant you, and I have inserted a thin foam uh, insole. In sizing, as the leather has relaxed over time, they feel a little roomier than my brass boots uh, in exactly the same size and last. I'm not sure why. Maybe because the saddle tan uh, stretches and then stays stretched out and doesn't come back. Uh, now, I said that these are supposed to be my right size, a half down from Brannock, like in the Leo last. But these are roomy, and my advice, I think, is to go a full size down. Where my diesel boots are in 8D, I think I should wear these in 7.5D. In terms of durability and patina, these started darker than my diesel boots in saddle tan. Uh, I'll put the review up there. That may have been the reason there were seconds, you know, a weird batch of hides because I still haven't found any other defect. I did condition these, and at first with liquid mink oil, even though I knew that would darken them. I wanted to waterproof them before I went on a very wet walk uh, last winter because veg tan leather can stain very badly with moisture. They did darken after the mink oil, but quite honestly, I don't think by that much, and especially after 24 hours drying. Since then, I have conditioned them twice with Venetian shoe cream, uh, one of those times after wiping uh, mud off with a wet rag. The leather has definitely become more supple. I, I wouldn't say softer, but it's still uh, very veg tan sturdy and supportive. The patina is pretty even, not a lot of variation of color, despite a few scrapes here and there. Uh, the creases and rolls are developing, especially around the ankles, funny enough, <laughs> but they're not wild. Uh, things I haven't liked. It's hard to cinch the laces up tight. I don't know, the wax on thin laces just seems to make it hard to get the friction to cinch up the laces against the uh, smooth brass hardware and the stiff leather. The D-rings don't help either because they're loose and smooth. The Grantstone proprietary wedge sole, not one of my favorites. This is my only Grantstone wedge, by the way, because I chose the brass boot with the commando sole. Now, I don't know if it's the rubber compound or the fact it is a bit softer or the fact that um, there's a couple of layers of firm leather in there, but I do find them hard to flex and break in because of the thickness. And I don't like the ridged pattern. I find this very slippery in the one direction. So if you're walking in mud in one direction, that's fine. But as soon as you twist and change directions with the ball of your foot uh, resting on the ground, slippery -o. It is interesting, I think, that the v Vibram Christie wedge sole that you get on red wing mock toes and uh, you know, similar to thoroughgood mock toes, 
Those look slippery because they're so flat, but I find them much less slippery in those conditions twisting around. What have I liked? I like the look. They are different from my other boots for sure, and they look functional out in the wild. I like the support once you get the eventual comfort. The sturdiness of the veg tan, uh, lined with leather in the, in the vamp, just wraps your ankle and around your foot. I do like the eventual comfort. After a couple of hours, that weird feeling of, oh, this isn't quite right, goes, and you wouldn't want to take them off. It's weird, I know. Two totally contrasting feelings, but they both exist in this boot at different times. Finally, in terms of QC, like I said, no idea why these were seconds. Uh, as for the rest, no issues after a year. Certainly the wedge sole has not parted company with the leather uh, midsole. The stitching on the welt as well as on the body of the boot has all stood up. The hardware is all secure. Nothing has uh, frayed or fallen off. Okay, so that's it. Knowing how little and irregularly I wear these, let me know if you want me to uh, update you on how they continue to uh, wear over maybe the next year. But that is my update so far. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to click on like and subscribe. Now, that really does help me out no end, honestly, so thank you. I do have a few other updates coming up uh, and a few comparisons between boots. And of course, I've been wearing my uh, Jim Green Nomzan boots these last few weeks and I will bring you a full review of them soon. Don't miss out on anything and subscribe. Until then, take care and see you again soon.